Okay, the boat is ready. Well, as ready as it gets. Captain, are you ready? Yeah, just flying our flag on the hockey stick. Ready to go. Alex is undoing ourselves from the mooring here. We had some spare backup mooring line hooked up just in case the one didn't hold. Yeah, never fully trust the mooring ball. Well, off we go. Saying bye to our home. It's been our home for a while now, but off to warmer, greener pasture, or whiter pastures with beaches <laughs> and blue water. Something I really enjoy about cruising over a road trip in a car is that you can eat while still making ground. You don't have to pull over to prep something or grab takeout. I can simply whip up a nice brunch and if we're lucky the autopilot can even steer while we eat. You have to be careful on the St. John's River. In some sections there's tons of buoys for crab pots. Most of them are off of the channel, but not all. So we kept a close eye to not get our new prop tank. All right, we're just waiting for the bridge to come up. Testing out my reverse against the current. Seems to be working pretty good. We're sitting in one spot here, not moving too much. And the bridge is almost up. Looks like we can get going. Well, the St. John's River is always interesting because you call bridges and actually there's one main street bridge that you have to call to get it to open and then there's the railroad bridge which usually is open but it kind of takes quite a while to actually get a hold of bridge standards here and be careful there's a lot of current on the St. John's River so don't run at high speed into those bridges and I finally contacted the Main Street Bridge on Channel 9. So now we're just waiting for someone to show up and open it up for us. Spinning in circles. Uh, looks like they need to send staff to either end of the pedestrian uh, walk path across this Main Street Bridge. I guess to uh, stop the, the pedestrians from walking. They were saying it was their safety crew. I think this is the first first time I've noticed this so maybe it's a new change or maybe we just never noticed it before. There's a dolphin out there. the marina for way 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 too long so being here on the St. John's River doing like seven knots right now because we've got the current with us versus last time that we went down oh this is this is the best feeling ever like it's freedom it's knowing that we're going to the Bahamas I'm just feels great and the motor is running
Well, six and a half hours later, we made it to Sisters Creek Dock. It's a free dock just near Jacksonville. We've stopped here in the past and it's a really nice place to stop and then carry on all to the Atlantic Ocean tomorrow. We did 39 miles today, but the current was with us, so that was so much better than the other way around. Isn't this awesome? You are editing and it's nighttime. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. We've never been able to do this in the past. Between the laptop and our new batteries, uh, we have no issues anymore editing at the better times to edit, which isn't in the middle of the day when the sun is out. <laughs> so, so that's awesome. It was warm today, but now it's kind of really cold. And it's our last night close to shore for quite a while. So I'm gonna go for a little bit of a walk because tomorrow morning we're gonna be taking off into the Atlantic all the way to West Palm. So that's gonna be a good 240, 50 nautical miles. So about 50 hours more or less. So let's go for a walk. Let's go. Excited? Yeah, ready to rock and roll. Let's get out of Sisters Creek and head out to the big blue ocean. We are flying out this cut. A whopping almost nine knots. It's pretty awesome. I just wish our GPS was working. We've had really bad luck this morning with GPS. First, my tablet wasn't working. That was an easy fix. I somehow turned off the GPS without realizing it. So that's perfect. But we got a new power supply for our GPS for our radio because along with a ton of other electronics, it kind of stopped working while we were gone. And so I just replaced it, but it's still not working. The GPS has the light blinking on it saying that it's receiving satellites and everything and it's doing its thing but our radio is just blinking away and there's no information so it's a bit of a bummer pretty frustrated actually it was a cruddy start to the morning trying to do that as Alex says I gotta start trying to work I gotta stop working on projects first thing in the morning because I get frustrated because it seems like every project I touch doesn't work the first time around the St. John's River Inlet is a major commercial shipping channel, so you need to keep a close eye on boat traffic and your VHF radio. And there's some fierce current that can be up to 7 knots, so it's all about timing with the tides. drill here. We got a heart balloon from Valentine's Day in the water. Nobody wants to see plastic in the ocean so we're gonna try to pick it up. There you go. Nicely done. 
I love you. I love you too. Well, today has been a bit of a motor sailing day. The whole, whole day we we've been having the wrong direction of wind or no wind whatsoever. So we're motor sailing. It's, we might be running out of fuel at one point unless the wind starts working for us tonight around 1 in the morning. Maybe, otherwise we'll stop in Fort Canaveral. reason we wanted to go on the outside and take this weather window, even though the winds were super light, was because we couldn't get a cruising permit. As Canadians in the US, we have to get a one year permit for our sailboat. And last year when we came back in, they never issued a new one, so our original one expired while we were separated from our boat. To renew it, you have to leave the country for at least two weeks. Instead. They gave us a permit to proceed from Jacksonville to West Palm Beach without stopping in port unless necessary. So there we are doing a non-stop passage. Wow, what a calm sail it is right now. The water is almost glassy, the full moon is out, and Tittery Jackson 2.0 is finally doing his job. He was being really finicky earlier. First the, the connector that goes into the, the pedestal that was making a good connection, so it was you know touch and go. You could jiggle it, you get power. So now I got some rets on it just for now, giving it full power. And then I think the little motor uh, wires that go into the bottom of the thing. I think there was a bit of a short going on, so it wasn't working. It was working intermittently. So yeah, anyway, now it's working. I don't know for how long, because that's the way he he is. He's a bit temperamental that way. But we have our third crew member for now, so it's 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 really good. And we got a sunset, it's so beautiful. Pass me the, the thing, the tool to open the, the hatch here. How's it going? Good. It's gonna go slow because we got a big kink in the, uh, the hose, but it's been a really nice night. Full moon, you can see really well actually, considering it's it's the middle of the night. It's a little chilly, but but it's been like super calm. Nice day to be out on the water, really. It'd be nice if there was a bit of wind. Well, there is wind, but it's right on the nose, so it's not very useful for us right now. Good morning, all you wonderful people out there. We are just outside of Cape Canaveral, so we've covered a decent distance already. And um, yeah, it should be pretty good. We'll have a good view of where the space shuttles take off. The night watch is pretty uneventful, pretty mellow, other than the autopilot messing up at one point and I had to kind of make a makeshift fix. Um, everything else is pretty good. Just trying to stay warm in the blanket and 
keep out of the cool breeze. Now the wind is coming from our stern, but not enough to really put up any sails. I pulled out some sails and put them back in a few times throughout the night. Really didn't get a whole lot more push from them, but whatever, it is what it is. We're still moving. And Jittery Jackson is making a lot more noise. He's turning into Squeaky Jackson. Not sure what's going on with him. If there's a uh, something in his mo in the motor or something st uh, making it squeak, but it's not sounding the greatest. Luckily, we have a spare motor for it, um, so if that one burns out or something, we can always swap out for the new one. But yeah, just enjoying the sunset and trying to stay awake. Might have to go wake up Alex soon, but I'm trying to let her sleep as long as possible because I know she was pretty tired last night. I'm kind of bummed out. I missed the sunrise. I was looking forward for the sunrise. That's like the best thing of sailing overnight. But oh well, at least I got some decent sleep in. Corey did the first watch, and I slept for a couple hours. Then I got up around 12 o'clock until 3:15, and he did it all the way until I woke up, which was around 7. And now it's super nice. It's blue sky. But wind's on the nose, <laughs> so we're using a lot of fuel, just motoring non-stop, that's pretty crazy. We have been going for 21 hours, 129 nautical miles, about halfway there, a little over. I sailed outside the safety zone of Port Canaveral but still close enough to see some of the space shuttle. Unfortunately, no takeoff today. Well, I just woke up and Alex was making me bounce around the bed <laughs> as we passed Port Canaveral. Yeah, we're just passing Port Canaveral and well, I had to go, I decided to take shortcuts which meant I went in like 11, 15 foot of water. So it was super bumpy, autopilot couldn't drive, but we made it. Now I'm actually sailing without engine. So right now the debate is whether we go in Port Canaveral because we don't really have that much fuel left, or we keep going down because the wind is actually good and we can actually sail. We just just turned off the engine for the first time. It's so exciting. Something weird's going on over there. Well, we're sailing. Things are falling over. slash light wind sailing experience a lot nicer and a lot more efficient I think too. That was so cool we just I just spotted something in the water it was that like dark gray black kind of thing pretty big actually and I'm like Corey there's something in the water and then we look over we're like holy moly it's a it's a manta ray so then we took down the whisker pole quickly and turned on the engine and tried to go back but try to find a manta ray that moves in the ocean it's kind of hard so now i also think that earlier what i saw probably was one of those two i wasn't too sure but that's so exciting wakes you up you know let's swing Looking for the manta rays. There's a couple of them, at least two. I'm thinking like three because 
they keep popping up all over. They're so cool, they're huge and so majestic. They must be eating. Another B E A U to full sunset. This time we don't have to listen to the engine. Just sailing along five knots. Perfect evening. Making supper. I'm glad I prepped everything before we left. Yum. Chicken curry. It's so delicious. Nice and warm on a cool night. Mm. Yum. Sunrise is actually the best thing when you're sailing overnight. Just completed two overnights and I can see West Palm Beach. It's like right there, but we're probably still not gonna be there for another hour because everything takes a little longer on a sailboat. But I'm so excited. I'm kind of tired, even though Corey's been really nice letting me sleep more than he did. These power boaters with these or these big fishing charters I should say are really not making me in the best of moods. This is the exact reason why we're not didn't stay on the ICW and I'm really glad we didn't at this point. I was so happy to have finally made it to West Palm Beach because it meant I could finally go and get some really good rest. I've gotta say being pregnant on a sailboat makes me quite a bit more nauseous or seasick compared to usual anyways. <laughs> 